Hi everyone. Have you ever seen those weird competitions on TV where Japanese people run through insane obstacles? <laughs> what am I asking? Everyone has seen them. Well, in Islam, the path to heaven is just like Takeshi's castle. You're probably wondering what I'm talking about, even though there is a thumbnail and a title. I'm talking about a challenge after death that most Muslims believe in. Because according to Sunni Islam, it is required to believe in it. And in Shia Islam, it is one of the basic tenets of the faith. The Sirat, or the bridge. According to Islam, specifically according to a very insane and long hadith, after death there will be a bridge that everyone has to walk on in order to go to heaven. I'm sorry, a bridge that every Muslim has to walk on. Non-Muslims all go to hell directly. What are you even thinking? <laughs> the Quran doesn't say very much about this bridge except making a few implications. But the hadith explain us in very many details uh, how this bridge is and what it is. According to narrations by Muhammad, after death, everyone will gather for the judgment. Allah will first deal with the non-Muslims, such as Jews and Christians, and will send them directly to hell after mocking them a bit. They will say, we want water, then it will be said to them, drink, and they will fall down in hell instead. <laughs> Allah is very funny as you can see. The remaining ones, the Muslims, will then have a bridge laid down in front of them. Under the bridge is hell, with its fire almost reaching the bridge. And in front of them is the path to paradise, where Allah waits for his pure, pious Muslims to pass the bridge. But not every Muslim will make it over the bridge. A lot of people who believe in Allah and Muhammad will also go to hell, temporarily, because Allah is merciful and sweet. The bridge is described by Muhammad as a slippery bridge on which there are clamps and hooks or thorns. Based on their good deeds and sins, some Muslims will cross the bridge as quickly as the wink of an eye, some as fast as a lightning, some like a strong wind, like fast horses, and others like camels. Some will be very slow, and the last ones will be dragged all over the bridge. There are thorns that attack those who pass the bridge, and some will be harmed while passing the bridge. It's quite weird that you would be physically harmed after death, but whatever. And others won't make it and will fall down into hell for their mischievous behaviors in life. The thorns will of course have the intelligence to tell which one is a sinner and which one is not a sinner. That's no surprise. That, that, that's nothing surprising. Okay, even hands can speak in the Islamic afterlife. The bridge is also narrower than hair and sharper than a sword. Those Muslims who fall into hell will be taken out of hell afterwards by Allah for the sake of Muhammad. I don't know what the point of throwing them into hell is in the first place, but as said, Allah is quite funny and he loves mockery. And seriously, who can complain about just going to hell and burning there, even though you submitted your life to Allah? Anyway, after this weird ritual is over, and all sinning Muslims have suffered enough by getting their bodies burned over and over again, the Muslims will be in paradise, and the non-Muslims will burn in hell for all eternity. It's all funny and interesting, but about all of this there is actually something that is much much more funny and interesting. Okay, actually two things. The concept of the bridge is not part of Christianity or Judaism, which is the reason why Christians and Jews are surprised by hearing about this. Considering that this bridge is really an essential part of belief and afterlife, if Allah is the same God of the Bible, then why was this bridge never introduced in the Bible to Christians and Jews? Okay, Muslims claim that the Bible was falsified by Jews and Christians, but even if that was true, what would be the point of removing this bridge from the faith? I mean, it doesn't harm their faith, it doesn't benefit them in any way, it makes no sense. Why would they do that? There is no explanation that makes sense, and I'm really curious right now. Point two, and this is much more interesting, it is not found in Christianity and Judaism, but... It is found in a religion that Islam mysteriously took many things from. Zoroastrianism. This ancient Persian religion has also a bridge called the Shinvat Bridge, also called Bridge of the Requiter or Bridge of Judgment. Although the Zoroastrian belief in this bridge is far more sophisticated, it has clear similarities to the Islamic bridge. It is a bridge to heaven and it is accompanied by blazing fire. 
every soul has to go over it. The bridge will appear good and easy to those who had good thoughts, words and deeds in life, and it will appear narrow and scary to those who did evil in life. The wicked ones among people will be taken by a demon and put into a place where they will be punished. The good ones will pass it. They will be taken by a good spirit and go to a good place and afterwards they meet their god or their highest spirit Ahura Mazda. As you can see there are only some differences like that everyone walks on the bridge. That spirits pick you up from there and that the Zoroastrian story doesn't have some annoying thorns. <laughs> Other than that, the story sounds scarily similar. It almost looks like Mohammed stole... No, he wouldn't do that, would he? No, 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 he wouldn't do that. Now, an Islamic apologist would explain this by saying that Zoroastrians apparently had some right and good teachings that were probably inspired by Allah at some point. But seriously? A semi-polytheistic religion has the right answer to something Islamic, and the Abrahamic religions don't have the answer at all? They don't even know of that? From my perspective, it looks very much like Muhammad taking something from non-Abrahamic beliefs, inserting them in Islam, and then selling them as Abrahamic and Islamic. You can try really hard and explain why this bridge never appeared among Christians and Jews and in the Bible. But it would be just that, trying hard. Then you could go on and try to explain why Zoroastrianism, a religion much, much older than Islam, has the exact same teaching. You could try really hard, but you would also look very embarrassing. But then again, how does the bridge make sense at all, if Islam is a religion where life is the test and death is the end? Why would Allah even bother putting a bridge there and playing with Muslims? What's the point? There is nothing left to learn, nothing left to test, you are dead already. Therefore, I will just leave this here as Islamic paganism. Abraham would be ashamed, I guess. Thanks for watching. My channel is not monetized. I can't even monetize my videos, even if I wanted to. So you can watch all videos without any ads. If you want to support my cause, you can do so on Patreon. The link is below in the description. I appreciate all your support very, very much. Thanks again, have a great weekend, and stay away from Islam. Seriously, you don't need a bridge. Just stay away from it. No one needs it. No one really needs this religion. Just stay away from it. No one really needs this religion. Just stay away from it.